you know, let's, let's, let's start off like, I don't know, you know, when uh, someone's looking at like a niche or a niche or however you want to say it, right. You know, it's always kind of, it's an interesting topic because um, trying to get into, you know, the, the blue ocean and red ocean, right. And trying to figure out the best place because that's, that's where it starts in any business, right. Is trying to find a spot where you're like, in a market where it's existing already, but there's still opportunity and you've created, you know, you know, an opportunity in, in a market, which can sometimes be difficult. What, uh, what have you seen that, you know, people do to get into a market that's more of a blue ocean rather than like a red ocean. And for people who maybe don't know what a blue ocean or red ocean is very simple, just red ocean. There's a lot of people in it already. It's tough to get into uh, a lot of comp- competition the sharks are eating all the food you know so it's bloody and then you got your blue ocean which is you know what you try to get into so yeah you just yeah i just wanted you know for anybody that didn't know what that was but yeah i don't know what was your insight on you know getting into a right niche and and you mm-hmm. know staying kind of viable that's it's very interesting because i've been i'm doing a training right now for uh, people on marketing overseas yeah and, and just I had an epiphany the other day while I was doing everything and I got questions. That's why I love question and answer is it really makes me think in a different way. And I thought of it in a whole different idea because everybody was talking to me and says, I have this unique idea. And just because they are in different country where I am and different marketplace, I said, no, this is exist. I already know about this. I already know about that we've heard of it we google it it's something right there so there is no new idea you know what i'm saying so i told them for us in marketing probably what the whole thing what we do is we know we should know that our idea is not a unique idea okay we're improving it but it's our job to put it out there as a unique idea we make it unique so to answer your question about niche market is basically people are niching down. Oh, recording stopped. All right, either way. <laughs> I think I'm running out of uh, space on the cloud for, for that one. But the do it like a niche, a niche idea thing to go down one more and one more and one more. What people are doing, what I've seen been happening is they present it in a very unique way. And they always say, this is a unique idea, never done before. And that's how they run with their marketing campaign. How, however, also at the same time, when you keep saying it's a unique idea, but you actually cannot explain why it's unique, this is where all the problems happen. And it happened to me with one of my Amazon product because the whole product is unique. So I had to go the other way to tell them, hey, it's unique, but it's not complicated. I don't know if you've seen my last product, that one is about hydrogen water, because it's by itself, it's very, it's very complicated. It's like, it's not an easy to understand concept. So sometimes when you're presenting something really complicated, you don't want to focus too much about how unique it is and how niche it is, it's just you say, yeah, there are so many of them, like other play, other ones, but this is the this is the best one for so on, so on, so. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, I agree. There's nothing really new under the sun. Uh, I mean, sometimes there is, but it's just kind of repackaging and and putting it together with uh, in a unique way. Um, yeah, 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 no, if, for if sure. You hear, if great. you hear Russell, if you hear Russell Brunson always says, people, they don't want improvement offers. They want new offers. They want something new. But right, like, right. you are giving them, we're giving them improvement, improved offer, nothing totally new. But that's what, that's what they think. They think, oh, I don't want something a little bit better. I don't want something slightly better. I want something completely different. And that's, I've, I've seen it so many times, even with, with myself, like the courses that I take, the training, everybody present them as something new, totally new. There's nothing out there like them. 
but in reality, once you start taking the training, taking the course, is like 70 to 80 percent is similar to other other training and courses. But they really, in their marketing, they put it as a something very. They put some new stuff in it. They put the way they do it, the way they execute it. But the majority of it is 70, 80 percent is similar to other things. Right. So, what is your idea on uh, like efficient or um, you know, maybe, you know, if someone's going to go and, and launch a business, you know, mm. what kind, you know, because when it, when it comes to launching a business, you don't want to just, you know, what I've seen is not just saying, hey, I just started a business mm. and we're here. Great. You know, it's more like, you know, kind of do like a movie trailer, you know, like building it up in a sense and having like a story behind it. Have you seen any, you know, like simple methods of, of kind of doing that? in a way that's like i mean it's not always cookie cutter step by step but like you know like anything like you know start off with some of this and then maybe add this and this and this mm -hmm. to get to your business launch I, I don't know if you've seen anything like that or had any you know insight to that because we're looking to launch our business mm -hmm. so that's why i asked because that's a little bit more kind of where we're at is we're you know building up some of our story right now right and looking yeah. to um you know push it to market soon um, you know, of course, not just saying, "Hey, give us money," or you know, like right, that, right. but you know, just kind of pushing the idea. The idea, idea not, not that right. we're not that we're selling anything yet. Obviously, there that'll come down the road. But you know, just that initial first, like, "Hey, like, we exist." You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, what is what have you seen some people do or anything unique? Yeah, uh, I think one thing. One thing I really, I really saw. I saw a a gym here, a fitness place, a body hack which is they, they do biohacking things. They did that. And also uh, another business, which uh, another one, which I've done two weeks ago, similar, similar to what they've done. And I think there was one more. And there is one by Tony, Tony and uh, Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi. They done that one. The common things between those three, they always do a soft launch which I found it very beneficial is you can call it a pilot if you want, like mostly in, in software, they say this is the pilot or the beta, but the soft launch, the soft launch is actually, you don't do any ads. You don't do any paid, nothing, no campaigns. You just go to the people like literally one by one, like, you just like word of mouth here you go this is the one do you need this do you need this do you need this and this one was gonna was gonna do is gonna keep your cost down that's one two gonna give you a lot of interaction time to fix any issues you have in the business and what actually people are looking for before you move before you move forward and that's gonna give you a very like rough and raw validation of, of your idea and see, okay, should I go down this route or should I just adjust to something else or it's too soon or this is not what I'm looking for. Especially if you're doing, uh, you know, if you're doing something is not very costly that you can, something kind of like, I don't know, like a digital product because you're doing a digital yeah. product and you're doing a pre-sale on it and you find there's nothing or no one is really interested in that one then that would be easier and cheaper to abandon than you're doing a physical product or you're opening right, a right. new actual so, But soft launch is very, very important on one-on-one -on -one interaction. Never think, I, that's why I said, don't think even with paying a single penny for advertisement. Yeah, it, yeah, okay. So, it might, it might you know, I mean. On you. It might backfire on you. Right. Are you mean like running ads already? Like, well, you don't. You, here's the thing. The wise, because you may. Oh, go ahead. Oh, what, you, what, you, what happened if you run ads and you get a lot of traffic, that your metrics, your metrics might not work very well. You're, uh, you're getting so many people and you don't know if they are the right people. Even if they show some kind of interest, but they don't return back to the business because you didn't have the one-on-one -on -one interaction with them and you didn't fix the issues and they don't take the time to tell you what problems do you have because kind of you went 
too fast. Like your net, you did your net very, very wide. You casted a very wide net and picked yeah. up so many people. So what kind of key questions do you, would, you know, would someone ask on, you know, like on a, like a pre, like a soft launch, mm. you know, to, to validate an idea in a sense. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, the ones I think about the back is, Hey, you know, you know, is this a service is a product, you know, that you would potentially use, do you, you know, or, you know, I mean, I don't know what, what kind of mm. questions would someone ask, you know, somebody on a, on a pre-launch to get some, you know, just like key questions to, to hone in on, I'll, on I'll like share, your I'll service. On the, group, on the group later, I will share with you guys uh, the, an article by Russell today. He, today, yesterday, he published it and it said, your opinion does not matter. Nice. As okay. It's a, a, a very good one. I'm saying even people, when you survey them and they tell you we will buy, you don't count on that unless they pull their credit card. And that's where the whole things comes in. But of course, you have to validate it, validate it somehow. So I don't think it's questions. I think it's more of actions. Think of actions. Things we are solving for them that somebody else is not solving or somebody else is solving in a very complicated way. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's, that's more look, look at their actions more than actually the questions they are doing. No, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, makes sense. So one of the, one of the things in the training that I've been doing, they put an, we did a soft launch, so we had 16 people or more they wanted. But what we did, we just put a very strict time frame and it was about 32 hours, less than 48 hours for the application. And whoever filled it in that time, they filled it. So we got 16 people. So what we decided to do is that actually, hey, we're gonna let all 16 people come in and we see their actions. We're not gonna ask them questions because interviews about this, uh, the program that we're doing is not gonna show us anything. And that's back to the survey thing. So I said, okay, let's get them in. And guess what, within the first two weeks, the number drops from 16 to seven, eight of them, half. Just by giving them a few things and ask them, hey, will you do this? Will you do that? Just put them in a situation. So you can do that with the people on self-launch. If somebody is not willing to give their email address, definitely they are not willing to pay you. And if somebody is not willing, is not willing to answer two or three questions or maybe have two or three clicks, Definitely, they are not not gonna pay you three or four hundred dollars, and definitely they are not gonna give you a lengthy feedback. They're of just, course, yeah, no just doubt. Kind of looking around, they are not really your customers. All right, enough of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was there was somebody had the the hand thing, the hand for question. It was you, Ali. My, that was me. That was you. That was me. Yep. Well, this is okay. Ali. You still got daytime there. <laughs> I'm from Seattle. It was the other side of Seattle. Thank you for adding me to this uh, very interesting meeting today. I just finished my work actually, and I'm heading home. But anyway, um, I'm interested and I agree about the soft launch. Actually, the company that I'm working with currently, uh, it's a multi-million dollar company that soft launch itself. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering actually when I applied to it, I could not find any social media, any advertisements, mm -hmm. any, any existence in internet world except the articles and the contracts and like like 3.5 million dollars and something like that numbers mm -hmm. um, this is my first month uh, so to introduce myself I work in the solar industry I'm a solar expert technician I do uh, remote troubleshooting and uh, I'm sorry I just have my lunch dinner <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, I've been learning about them and the way how they reach their clients. Um, it's like face to face, like, hey, NS, you need service. I'm going to provide you the service. I see right. you, you're, you're struggling with one, two, three. I can offer you one and a three and maybe two. I can um, subcontract it to this company. So that's how they found out themselves. Um, and, uh, and the solar industry, for example, is like a manufacturer, they make a car, but for example, they came to them and say, hey, you always have a problem with the paint. We can offer you this equality of the paint. So in the solar industry, we always have problem with the troubleshooting and the monitoring and the service. And this is, I'm talking about across the universe, like all the global is the mm -hmm. problem with the, with the troubleshooting and the technical support and the customer service. So they found the niche of that and they created a multi-million company and they start to buy bankrupted companies. Actually, they buy the portfolios of them. Mm. Um, so we have about 18,000 assets or 18,000 systems across the US and we provide them with customer service, a very high level customer service, um, AI, computerized, uh, robotic systems, like just they, they do the work of a human being technically. Mm. So, so we just touch the last, technically the last phases of interaction between us and between uh, the homeowners, but well, everything is done by programming. We have in-house software engineers, they designed that. And now we started, just launched about two weeks ago, our, uh, our kind of like virtual reality troubleshooting, remote troubleshooting. And this is one of the cool features that we are working on. Uh, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. That's the thing about. I want to ask about the funding. Finding a niche, like for example, this is a classic example. Is like, hey, you have a successful Apple product, and there are so many businesses doing doing uh, Apple accessories for that one. So sometimes, not necessarily, you actually create. The original product, but they call it piggyback. Piggyback on somebody else, else like popular, successful thing, and that's that's what you can do. Is and it works if you're doing something unique. It works, but with this one also, it needs you gotta have speed to market. This will matter more than other things with the speed to market. So you need actually once you find something like that, a niche, you gotta go. Uh, go really fast to the market with it and execute on it very well. Otherwise, otherwise it will, be, will get saturated pretty quick. Yep, I agree. Awesome. Got some question? Got something else you guys want to talk about? I know Patrick got something about traffic. Because oh, Yes, that is that is correct. That is correct. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me. This is a very good group. Very good group. Yeah, um, no problem. I do have a question in um, uh, traffic. How can I uh, generate traffic? Uh, I have a uh, product-based business, and I'm going to be launching on Kickstarter. So that's why mm -hmm. I'm not sure how can I just generate any traffic. I'm I'm currently in the pre uh, pre launch phase. Mm -hmm. and I'm stuck. I'm like literally stuck. And I I, I heard about your conversation. Uh, earlier with the uh, soft launch, which is a really, really good idea. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually in the sports performance niche. So I, I was thinking of maybe I should uh, go to um, local gyms and maybe just start talking to maybe individuals or mm -hmm. something just to uh, do the soft launch or mm -hmm. I'm just looking for a traffic. I'm just like literally stuck right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I know about your product. So exactly that's what we say. So soft launch is basically also... I, some people, they consider it idea validation, but actually it comes after the idea validation. Once you validate your idea, then you go to, to the soft launch phase. Like it's, oh yeah, just to fix the problems that you got before you go with the, with, the final, with the final product. Or like you see, you see those on Indiegogo and Kickstarter sometimes, they do a great job of marketing, 
and they get all the fun, more than the fun they need, like five, six, seven times, and they always mess it up where? They mess it up on manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Or they manufacture and they get the contract and it get messed up where? Get messed up by shipping because they are shipping internationally. And it causes all these issues. Like, I mean, you're aware of it. You've seen it. We've talked, we've talked about it and we saw so many campaigns where they delayed by a whole year after their like a promise time or something like that. So for you, the soft launch probably, because you validated the idea or you want to talk about like who is it or who is not, then yeah, the gyms will be a great place. However, with the price point that you're talking about, what's your price point last it, time? It's uh, about 60 to 100, 60 to 100 dollars for one, one piece. It's kind of, it's actually kind of like a Fitbit, uh, a electronic device. Yeah, so for you, if you go to the gyms, then don't go to Planet Fitness or those places where they have their membership $10, $20. Because mm -hmm. those are not going to be your customers. Okay. But you want to go you want to go to CrossFit places. Mm -hmm. CrossFit places, maybe Gold's Gym, see what, what areas you have. Local franchise ones, the local ones, the locally, locally owned one. So what you do, you want to see their membership. If any membership, like they have it lower than $50, $60, then they're not going to be your customers. If you are spending a month, $10, they're not going to buy it. Most likely, they're not going to try, especially a new device with a, from a brand they don't know about for like $100. That's there's just less likely, less likely they do that. Either that one, and you know what I would say? I just thought of that. Um, Go check co-working space. Okay. Co-working space. Those are a good place for it because most people who are who go there, they're like more of entrepreneurs and people are trying to fit a lot in in small not space, like they do a lot of things in at uh, one time. And your product is to save people time and on the go and traveling. And I think they're going to be more, more open to the idea. Mm -hmm. At least if you want to do, you know what you can do even, uh, I know that's this kind of classic, but it might work. You do like two or three page flyers or something like that foldable and you leave a stack. It says, hey, just this one, can I leave it here just to get opinion? Or you spend the day there. Kind of like a WeWork. I heard of like WeWork. Yeah, yeah, we work. One of them, WeWork. There are so many of them. They are popping up all over the place. But you might want to spend a day there and just buy a day pass and just chat with people and say, "Hey, what do you think of this idea?" And again, I'll send you guys the the article. Let me find it here and I'll send it. It's uh, it's very very interesting. It's like saying your opinion doesn't matter in a sense. Also. People, they tell you, oh, like they say, oh, yeah, this is a nice idea. It's cool. I will buy it. But when it comes to buying time, it did not happen. So we want to make everything easy for the customer. But sometimes you want to make it hard for them, like you're adding those friction points. So you know who will do all these friction points that are more likely your customer than somebody is not, is not like. He's just clicking around and saying, oh, yeah, this is a cool idea. And exactly, it depends on the question. If you ask them, is this a good idea? They will say, yeah, sure, it's a good idea. Or maybe you say, well, will you buy it? That's a whole different thing than, oh, it's a good idea. Got it, got it. Yeah, because I'm, I'm literally like all over the place with like marketing, I'm trying everything and I know I should focus on just one thing and just stick to it. But mm -hmm. I pretty much am in the phase where I, I'm done with everything, with like the production of the prototype and, and everything except that one, one pinpoint, with the pain point, which is uh, marketing. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm just trying to see if I can just generate that, that last point, um, the pain point, which is marketing and driving traffic. And I actually like this, your- yeah, I, This is gonna be the most idea. important one for you. Yes, yes, to get, yes. Get, to get going. I, you used to, used to be more active on LinkedIn. I haven't seen you in a while. I know, I know. I was just, I don't know. I'm just like focusing on marketing right now. Well, this is, that's what I'm saying is LinkedIn has been really like hot for businesses. And I think that's where, where your, your product going to fit, going to fit with the people who are traveling, people who are in the office, small spaces, 
At least that's at least that's what I think. Have you tried to actually talk to some of them? I have not. I have not. Hmm. I'm just trying to think of groups here. If you have any groups on on mark on travel or business or business with people, it's it's hard. Uh, it's hard to find them on the fly sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. I'm gonna send it right here to the chat. And actually, I'm gonna put it on the group after we're done on the one. That's not me, but I'm gonna send it here to the group. That's the post I reposted it for for that one on the your opinion doesn't matter. But yeah, try try to find actually people who are gonna help you. And you know, one thing one thing you might want to consider, even if you push even if you push your uh, lunch date a little bit a little bit further, have people take not survey but ask them with the with the Facebook there's the poll the poll thing maybe this is what you want you say hey I'm making this product what color do you like and just put two colors out there for them two or three colors you can also do something like I don't know uh, you just think of your product even though you said it's done but just to get interaction just to get engagement and Got that's what we're gonna do probably at the beginning with Facebook you want to get impressions. You just want to get your name out there, the actual product, visualize it out there. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I second opinion, Anas, on that. Um, yes. I studied, I studied industrial design, so any development. I, we can't hear you. I don't know. It sounds so far. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, can you guys hear him? No. It's a can little bit now? less, less volume. How about now? Much better. Okay. So I second NSS opinion on that. And, um, um, I can relate to your subject, even though I don't know your product. Ali, Ali, we can't, we can't hear you. I don't know if your microphone or maybe you're driving. No, I'm just in the car. Oh. I'll try again later. Uh, let me disconnect it. How about now? Yeah, much better. Much better. Okay, I'm talking through the phone now. Okay. So yes, uh, I believe what Anas uh, said is correct, and I still don't know what what is your product, but it looks like it's like um, it's a new product, something related to fitness, and yes. you want it. To get some feedback to launch your 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 business or your idea, uh, feedback is important. But as Anna said, uh, people sometimes will be interested in giving you their opinion, but they are not willing to pull their credit card. Mm -hmm. uh, that is really interesting concept. I launched a construction remodeling uh, up to you design company in 2015. And I closed it in 2017 uh, since I moved to Washington State. Um, uh, my connection and my market was my professors at college. And about, let's say, about 20 of them, they say, oh, yeah, that's, that's great. We would use your service, blah, blah, blah. But actually, three or four of them used. So estimate about like 1% or 2% of that, of that crowd actually going to use your product. Mm -hmm. uh, the feedback is very important, actually. However, if you do good with those two, three, four people, they will use your product. You can use their feedback and their um, reviews. And that's a lot of and tons of startups online. They use that the first five, six reviews opinions as marketing, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have them um, for like a discount of the price or whatever it is, and that's all assuming I still don't know what is your project and your product. Uh, just mm -hmm. to use them as like a video and a marketing and um, populate that on your website and they will give a feedback. And that is the best scenario. So mm -hmm. in my experience, when I launched my construction remodeling company, um, it's kind of like a crafted company where Whatever your idea, you can see on like 
Pinterest or Fixer Upper or other ideas. That's what I was uh, doing, actually. I'm not like any construction company. I sometimes work at night just because my, my client wanted to be at home at that time and they want me to work at night. So I use that niche as like a, as like a point or a pivot point of my, of my company. Um, but yeah, I use them actually, I use like, I gave them discount to use them as marketing sources. No, no. I was like, Hey, I'll give you two, $300 discount, but I want to get like at least three, four, five calls out of you. And they'll say like, yes, we will help you. We actually have this, this neighbor or this friend that needs some, some project done at their houses. So technically using your, your clients as marketing elements did mm-hmm. that make did that make that clear maybe yes yes yes, yes it did yes it did yeah and my uh my product is a high-tech uh ropeless jump rope so i'm gonna i'm building a high-tech ropeless jump rope uh and i'm gonna be launching and i do agree with you Anas, that i'm gonna actually uh extend my launch date and it's better to do that to get and dial in my audience uh mm-hmm. and get all uh, the the leads that i need for for my launch so I am actually uh, extending my uh, launch date. Before, before you think about it, here we go. Uh, that's another thing. Before you think about it, hey, I need to get audience, I need to get audience. Before you need to get audience, you need actually to dial your, your ideal client. You need to dial them down. Say, actually, who is your ideal client? Mm-hmm. And there is a concept I learned and it was like oh, so true. And, and this is just... It's like eye opening when it says, Hey, well, you look at, for example, a Samsung product or an Apple product, or you get, look at a Windows, or you look at, I don't know, you got, for example, Mercedes, or look at Lamborghini, like four cars on these ones. Every one of those brands, they have an ideal client. But that doesn't mean some other people, some other customers, they will buy. That product as well and what they they call this one they call it uh, the spillover effect which is you actually going for that client but this client customer so happy with the product that starts attracting other customers you didn't intend to mm-hmm. and That's only true. at that time you expand your horizon you expand the your net that you're trying to cast now you expand it so you start as small as possible which for me when I started Doing these things, I did backward. I did like, okay, as wide as possible and then closing it down. But this takes a lot of resources. Like you need to be able to run like a few thousands dollars of ads on Facebook to actually dial down your ideal customer. And now you're, I mean, there are two ways of doing it. You have the money, you can do a wide net and then close it down. Or if you don't, you just go for a single person, a single customer, and then after that, you start widening it up. But the problem with this one is like sometimes we hit and it's not the right customer and you have to have another customer and you have to have another point. So it depends on what works. And that's what I'm saying is with organic, it's easier because you can go to Facebook groups and interact with them. And I think I invited you to one of them, small business entrepreneurs, and you see people all over the place on it. But what helps me when I look at the post, I can understand kind of the people, the level, the level they are playing, they are looking at. It's more of, hey, promoting my stuff. But if you go to other groups that are smaller, uh, more strict, then you start actually have a more lengthy conversations with people. Got it. So what, that what tells you if they really like it, if they don't like it, what they are looking for. And instead, instead of, and, and that's another thing is, is really important, I think. I think you will, you, will, you will appreciate it because you think this way, but you don't say it this way. Always lead with the benefit when you're introducing your product. Mm-hmm. Like I know, I know, for example, right now he asking you, what's your product? Say, oh, high tech rock, which is true, but from a marketing mind mindset, like you look at a view and said, well, my products help you lose X amount of calories in that much time and you can carry it on you. Mm. 
I you see. know what I'm saying? Now is a whole different thing. Now, I don't care what your product is. If it's a jump rope, mm -hmm. if it's a pull, if it's a, an application, if it's, a, if it's an glasses, I don't care what it is because I got the results that I want. Got it. You told me the results and I like it. So I'm going with the results. You got what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I have like, and the one we're doing with this training I'm doing, I'm telling them, hey, go find your competitors in the market. And they are having a hard time finding their competitors. I said, yeah, you have a hard time finding your competitors because you don't understand what you're offering. Once you understand what you're offering, then you're going to understand what others, they say, well, I'm offering one, two, three. I said, yes, that's the name of the service that you're offering. This is not the benefit of the service. Mm -hmm. it makes, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, so this one, I mean, for me as a sub, I said, okay, wow, that makes sense. Like, you know, with my hydrogen bottle thing, because yeah. I was hydrogen bottle, hydrogen bottle. I still say that, but when I go to the customer, I just go at a single benefit, and tell them the single benefit is for reducing oxidative stress. If they understand that, those are my customers. If they don't understand that, they are not gonna buy based on this benefit. I have to find another one, another benefit to actually tell them. So for you, even if when you're gonna try to do ads or not even ads, let's not talk about ads, just post, post. You know what, actually I'm gonna do a whole, I wanna do a full training on on how to get, uh, how to validate your customers just by typing posts, just by writing headlines. Just from the headline, the headline is gonna tell you all the customers they're gonna respond respond to, to what headline. That makes a lot of sense, that really does. Like for example saying, uh, do you wanna get lean or be different, get lean or something like that instead of just presenting the, the product. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Okay. Because the product, the product is, is the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so many people less interested in the vehicle unless they know what results they are looking for and they want to look for that results and then they say, hey, I'm going to pick this vehicle or that vehicle. But when you start talking to them, hey, this is the result that you want to achieve? Yes, I got the vehicle for you. I got the way that you're going to do it for you. And that comes after. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. That answered my question. Thank you so much. There you go. No problem. No problem. I have a hard time with it. I have to talk it out. Yeah. Out loud just to just to get myself. Because you know, that's the hard thing. When you're an entrepreneur, you have to wear different hats. Literally. And switching from one to another is not as easy as we think. It's hard. It is hard. It's hard because like, hey, I'm thinking a technical guy. And all of a sudden, I'm a customer that understand nothing about technicals and I have to look at it from a lens of results and emotions and benefits. Yeah. Actually, thank you. Thank you, Anas, for this input. I, I, I actually use that, but I did not know that thinking exists, actually. Uh, my... <laughs> um, thank you so much, Anas, for... Hey, no problem. Hey, Alex, you're doing it. That's all yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I did it. I did it in a way where like, hey, do you have a project in mind that you want to do or to make at your house? And you could not find any contractor that can do that. And they say, yes, actually, I want to build this a closet. And every contractor or carpenter I call, they say like, oh, we can't do it. And I was like, all right, so what do you want? Can you send me? And the first thing they sent me, it was like a Pinterest idea. And uh -huh. I was like, hey, I want this closet. And I was like, okay, cool. And I would jump to it. So, so I hey, think. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, they don't yeah, care yeah, how you're thank you so it. much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for bringing this up. That, that actually just like a flashback in mm -hmm. like 2015 or 16. So um, I found myself doing like very neat projects that I might not consider as a contractor. It's like remodeling homes and bathrooms and stuff. But it's more of about like, what do you want to do at your house? I will do it, technically. Mm -hmm. I did not tell them how. I did not tell them what technologies I have. I did not tell them that like, I love to reverse engineer 
uh, pictures, like, okay, a picture of a closet, I have to reverse engineer it and say, mm -hmm. okay, that's how I need to do. So um, in terms of your example, I think your name is Patrick. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, my name yeah. is Ali. Uh, it's like, don't tell them about the technology. Just tell them it's like about like, um, that is the result. That's what you're going to get. You know, like, mm -hmm. hey, do you want to now, like, for example, like the current issue. Do you want to now get like sanitized in one second? <laughs> yeah. virus. I don't tell them how. I don't tell them what technology I I came up with. I don't tell I don't tell them what invention it is. I can tell them like testings and and blah 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 blah. But tell them the result, like what you're gonna get out of that project. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, Patrick, for for this opportunity. Yes, yes. Yeah, that actually does make sense. It really does. Because I was, my mindset was, how do I di differentiate myself from my competitor? And that's why I kept saying about the uh, technology, because I do have different technologies in my product that it's just different than my competitors. But that is probably more not really relevant to the customer because they don't really know anything about my brand. They don't know anything. They just want to know, I want to get lean. I want to do this or I want to lose calories or something like that is their main purpose. Not what I think. How do I di differentiate my, my, um, uh, right. So, my so go, go back to the question that we got at the beginning of the call was about the niche thing. So now they want to lose calories. You have to niche it down mm -hmm. one more and then one more and then another one. So mm -hmm. probably three. So you look, for example, losing calories, on the go while you're traveling for business. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So now you have on the go is not for anybody on the go. What does the on go mean is when you're traveling. Okay, that's your, you're targeting a traveler person. Okay, what person he's traveling for fun? If somebody's traveling for fun, eh, they don't care about like exercising. I don't think so. <laughs> so no, for business, you get what I'm saying? For business and you can add to it um, hey I mean just go crazy with it even if it doesn't it's just to, to see where you got like hey do you want to exercise while you're flying it's possible they're not gonna let you and jump in the in the aisle do that but it's possible if you have the space you can do it there is no harm in that you know what I'm saying do you want to exercise exercise in the airport sure go at the corner and you just pull the thing and you just do it you want to carry your exercise machine in your pocket mm -hmm. like this this one saying i want to do a training about the headlines because every headline is going to give you a different kind of customer a different kind of interest in it like for for ali is like for his construction thing i would totally if i uh, if i if you were still doing it brand yourself is and just you target women and you just say, hey, make your Pinterest pins come to life. That's it. That's it. Did you know that? I did that. <laughs> Is that? I, I, I actually used that on like uh, female, yeah. on like female uh, professors, the staff at my college. Absolutely. I, I used to live in a tiny town and my first clients were mm -hmm. my my network at the college mm -hmm. that I graduated from. And uh, at that time was like fixer upper. It was like the big thing, which yeah, is- Well, uh, we, live, we live next to them, so. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, technically that was it. It's like, do you have like actual idea on Pinterest or something? I can, I can literally make it, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, Yeah, you start, you start because uh, first of all, they would, they would think to themselves, like, it's like, it's not worth it. And second, uh, all the contractors around me, my competitors, want to things they know, things they are comfortable with, and things can generate a lot of money to them. Mm -hmm. And I found, I found that like, okay, they can't do that, then I'm going to do that. And that's how I generated my technically full year calendar booked uh, and my startup within like three months or four months. There you go. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah.
<laughs> awesome. You guys have any questions? There's something to talk about. So I have I have a question for you guys. How many of you how many of you actually have uh, participated in mentoring programs before, coaching or mentoring programs, which is one on one thing. It's not like recorded things. Have any of you? Oh, we got two people already left. But no, I have not. I have not. You have not. I have you. Uh, once. Yeah. Yeah. What What was your experience about it? What would you say about it? Um, I was placed with a mentor about two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, regarding some uh, kind of a startup project that we came up with um, when I was hired, and that was my kind of my promise to this company. Uh, so yeah, all. So far, everything is good, and we came up with actually results. And um, I already have two ideas implemented in the company, so nice. It was it was it was a nice one on one time, you know. So, what do you say? What would you what would you say is your best takeaway from just being on one on one mentors, like with somebody? Yeah. I think the takeaway, um, I've never thought of that. So probably as that at that time, so the person who wanted to, um, or who was willing to actually partner with me and take that project. Uh, so when I was hired, we did not know each other. So we had something called soulmate and it's not like the soulmate. Because we work in solar, so it's oh, like solar yeah. mates. And we start to come up with ideas. And then when we start to really talk, I found like, wow, uh, we have a lot of in common. And we can create that final product, which is technically a software that we are working on. And I just, I just like that time I have like weekly, one hour a week that I sit with him and we talk about the project, the plan. So technically like what you are doing guys, mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I think I encourage that in, in, in gatherings and in groups and companies and projects that we, we just allow some certain time of our, let's say weekly hours and give that one hour to do something in common. You know, like one on one. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. I just wanted to know you guys your opinion on it because this is kind of the I found my passion is doing that, like actually to do mentoring and coaching on both ways, getting mentors and being a mentor. Which yeah. is very interesting. Very interesting. And that's, and that's the thing, is like we don't have a role, it's like he is my mentor. You know what I mean? But yeah. just like he exists, because I'm the newcomer to the company, so I sometimes come up with an idea and say, hey, why we did not do that, or why we don't do that? And I said, no, actually, we thought of that, and we actually did it, but then our company structure is one, two, three, four. So somebody has knowledge, and somebody has ideas, and when those come together, they create really good result. Mm, interesting. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the part of it is the main thing is when you get mentors and especially when you click with your mentors and you, you start, you start excelling, you start working, yeah. working faster and the progress yeah. is just skyrocket. That's why. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Patrick, do you have anything? Uh, I do have a question for you. Uh, what are some methods or some ways uh, to keep focusing on uh, what you're doing? Because sometimes I just go out and it's just, uh, things are just not going bad, like things are going bad and stuff. What are some methods? And I, I know, I, I don't mean just coffee, it will fo focus you. 
I know I love coffee, but I know it's just not going to, it's like magic. No, no. But I'm looking for some, some methods, maybe, I don't know, sport or something just to re rewind and refocus, especially uh, I'm right now in the pre-launch phase and I'm just stuck and, and I'm not, I'm not going to give up. I'm definitely not going to give up. It's just yeah, yeah. No, it's, not. it's very hard to get uh, motivated. And, and as you saw, you asked me about LinkedIn and that's one of the signs it's like, I'm trying my best, but uh, it's it's very tough. It's very tough. It is. It is. It is. I tell you. I think. I think one of the thing I have so much, so much hard time, like so much trouble with actually doing that. But you know what? I will gonna tell you two to three things. Not many, because if as many is not gonna be applicable. Mm -hmm. One of them. I don't do it every day, but the day I do it, I get things done. This one. You see it. I have a priority list, okay? okay. Yes. I have a, I got it also from crowdfunding, a small a small thermal printer, which is with an app and I do this one. So even if I don't stick to this one, it just keep reminding me what actually I need to do. And I only put the things that I know is gonna move the needle. Mm -hmm. Like the things that get, like this, the Facebook Live, it's right there on the second one. This is the second one is I do a Facebook live. That's why I wanted to do. So I do the priority list. That's one. The second one, less work, mm. not more. The more time you dedicate to, to work and you have a problem with focusing, the more time you're just going to waste looking at the things that really don't matter. That's true because I just uh, some some days I feel extremely burnt out because I'm doing I'm all over the place I'm all over yeah, the place. yeah. and that's the thing that's the thing not all done do use the use the rule of eighty twenty look mm -hmm. at the twenty percent of work that are gonna give you the eighty percent result don't do the eighty percent I told you I haven't seen you on on LinkedIn if LinkedIn is not is not your thing don't worry about it now if uh, Instagram is not your thing don't worry about it right now. See actually where you're gonna get the most out of the one hour that you're gonna spend. And in my opinion, I'm looking at it from outside. I think the best time you're gonna spend is you go, you pick your Facebook groups, not in maybe in Instagram too, but not others. Just pick one platform or two platforms and go and have conversations, one on one conversations, one on one. Okay. Because that's the only that's the only way, and because you have you don't have anything to sell, then it's gonna be an easy way for you. Because right now you don't have anything to sell; you're just looking for information. Correct. Okay. Go to the keto group and see what people have problem. Go to CrossFit CrossFit groups and see what problems do they have. Maybe maybe your niche is you are looking at it totally from the wrong aspect. Maybe we are looking, we've been talking about people who are traveling and this and that, but the people who are interested, maybe the totally the opposite, the people who they don't want to join the gym. Mm -hmm. There you go. Maybe that's something. But you're not going to find out until you actually talk to people. Got it. Got it. And just be creative with, with your content. Like don't ask them. That's, I was talking to the people about also with that training and says, oh, we're going to ask them one, two, three. I said, direct question in marketing is going to give you a direct answer that's not helpful you want to dig deep into it you want to ask three four levels deep or questions is okay it's not like okay i have this product if i make it will you buy it maybe sure yeah <laughs> but but actually it's like no ask them ask them is do you have a problem with so and so or how is your health you travel when you travel how do you exercise i don't why you don't exercise because because what i don't have time also a problem with time but there are, in every hotel there's an exercise room well i don't like going there why you don't like going there you know what i'm saying got it you actually want it because people they start telling you how to market to them how to talk to them Got it, got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna focus on uh, Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. That's what I'm saying, just focus. So back to focus is you do a priority list and you do less work 
less time, so don't burn out. So actually, can focus on it, and just focus on the ones that gives you gives you the most. Got Whatever it. give you the most most result. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean give you the results that you're looking for, but at least give you the more. Let's say now your measurement will be the most interaction. Probably that would be that would be your your measurement now. Whatever group they're gonna interact with you the most, whatever group is gonna carry conversation with you or people or platform, that's where you wanna be. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. I think we're come to an hour here. If you guys got you got nothing, then we'll we'll end up the call. I know.